welcome back to Ribbon Candy Hooking. I'm Deanna. Happy Friday. Happy gallery night. It is great to see you. It's our night, isn't it? This is our night. Sorry, I'm a couple minutes late. I'm in a different place, as you can tell. Happy gallery night from my mom's house in Granby, Connecticut. It's a very quiet backdrop behind me today. It's because I'm in bed, right? You must forgive me. I do have a, I have pajamas on the bottom. I do have on a green shirt for Happy St. Patrick's Day, right? Good luck. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody who is celebrating. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. So I am very wound up for an ultra supersized <laughs> gallery night tonight. We have got so many beautiful rugs to look at. It is absolutely bonkers. So we better get going pretty quickly. Let me give a quick shout out to some of the buddies who are here. And I'll try to keep track of the thread as we go along. But I don't want to waste a lot of time because you all have sent me some of the most beautiful things I have ever seen in my life. And I cannot wait to share them. And I cannot wait for us to look at them together and make our comments and our oohs and our ahs. Cheers, my dears. I'm having a nice Sauvignon Blanc tonight. A very nice, quiet night. The kids are downstairs with my mom. Oh, Linda B., great to see you. Happy weekend. Cheers, my dears. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Today was also my sweet little grandmother's birthday, that little sweetheart. She's been gone for years, but uh, it was her birthday, that little elf. She was like a little a little fresh leprechaun, you know. Sue's happy St. Patrick's Day. Great to see you, Cats Gallery. Cheers, my dears, to all the green beers. All the green. We have some green bagels downstairs for the morning. I don't know how that's going to play out, like, you know, all in all. I'm guessing... It's fine, but it's a very weird-looking bagel. Green bagels. We might even have green cream cheese. I'm not sure. Anita, great to see you. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Linda B., happy St. Patrick's Day. Carol P., happy St. Patrick's Day from Utah. Oh, my gosh, is it your last night already? I'm glad you got this stuff just in time, right? Oh, your last night. Oh, I'm so glad that you're celebrating with us here, too. I bet it's been a great time. I can't wait. I can't wait to hear more about it. You know, I have to tell you, let's start. I want. I, there's so many friends in our group at this point, right? There's so many buddies. And I, re I realized today that Juliette Lewis, um, I have one of her photos. And, you know, she, she does the Chesapeake series. And she did the giant dragon that she was taking to um, Thailand now um, with a tour group called, I think, the Glass Dragon, something like that. So she, if you're friends with her on Facebook, she's been posting pictures like crazy, and she presented that rug, and that's one of the photos I want to show you, to her, her host family in Thailand. So we're going to look at those, and I said to her, you are posting such beautiful photographs from where you are. She's like in the water with elephants. Seriously, like that's not like a, I'm not being lyrical, like she's in the water with elephants. And, um, <laughs> and, and she's going to all these markets with crazy beads and rugs and housewares and all this lovely clothing. And I said, I want to look at some of those photos together um, of all your adventures and what you're finding. But I'm going to wait until she's back with us when she's, you know, she can watch live too. But it just made me think um, sometimes we should include some photos of what we're doing in, in special places that we're going. Now that it's getting to be spring again, right? And, and like people are thinking about holidays and moving around. It'd be fun to know what everybody's up to. We're such a, we're such a close group. Kirsten, great to see you. Happy Friday. Power back and everything after that storm exciting ryan happy friday ryan helps me so much with so much stuff by the way the first book is almost done i just have two or three more little changes jane has been helping me like do 99 percent of all of this it's a lot and uh, while well, i'm working on book number two but it is almost done and i'm really excited because i have to say book one got to the point with all of the craziness and the frenetic um, energy and busyness it was it was a lot right it was it was a it was breakdown in a lot a couple of times and I thought I I can't even look at it <laughs> I can't even look and I and I finally have looked at it kind of like one of these you know and it's amazingly pretty it really is I'm very proud it looks beautiful they cut a couple chapters out nothing I can do about that they chose the work that was going in it and I'll tell you what when the book comes out I hope that your work is in that first book and if it's not guess what it's going to be in the next book. We're, we're putting books together. This is, our, this is our business from now on. We're putting books together with your work in it. So um, if it gets cut from one book because that, there was too much content in the first book, they asked for it, right? They asked for it. I'm not going to start. But, um, yeah, if, there's too, if, if, if your stuff got cut from the first book, just know that I, that wasn't me and that your stuff will appear in one of the later books. I absolutely promise you. We celebrate each other's work here, right? That's the most important thing to me. 
So that's what we do. So uh, Lisa, good to see you. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Cindy, hello in Rochester, Minnesota. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Candice, good evening. I'm so glad that that pattern made it to you. I sent Candice the supplies in one of the patterns for the second book, the Design Life book, and it was lost in the post for a while. And I just thought it was just like the tip of the iceberg. I just thought I was going to fall apart and it arrived today. What a great surprise. And your Van Gogh rug for me arrived. I'm sorry, I should have brought it tonight. I left it at home because I traveled. But we're going to look at that on Monday for coffee time. It is, it is a gem. It is absolutely incredible. Everything that I'm seeing, I, I got uh, three rugs today in the post from buddies who are help, who are doing the design life um, rugs for me. Couldn't believe, I just couldn't believe it. All three of them were incredible. Way better than I could have done. I'm not being humble. Way better than I could have done. I am just in heaven in the Van Gogh rug hanging. It's been a great day. Jane, my love, good to see you. You are only four hours ahead for this time being. Jane, when are you having your daylight savings? Is it going to be soon? It's nice to be. It's nice to be one hour closer during this time. It feels closer anyway. Linda H. in Massachusetts, great to see you. Melanie, did I say happy St. Patrick's Day to you? Is everyone wearing green? You know, I have an all green top and I couldn't find it. I had to stop looking, but this is pretty green. It's not as green as I would like to be. I'm sorry about that. I hope you're all wearing green. Pamela, I don't think I said hello from Liberty, South Carolina, where it's raining. Boo, but at least it's Friday night and it's gallery night, right? Oh, man, April, great to see you. Anita, a lovely cup of tea sounds wonderful, actually. Sounds better than this wine right now. Um, Cindy, Jane is in Wales in the UK. Sharon, great to see you. It's it's like a sunny spring in Vancouver. Is it really like sunny? Hi from sunny Esping. Sunny, sunny, like, oh, it's sunny like spring in Vancouver, British Columbia. Oh, that is good. It's going to be warm here this weekend, too. Please, Lord, send it to us. It is time. I'm just catching up on all of your, Ryan's having a Mountain Dew, zero sugar, spark, yummy. Is that sarcastic? Was that actually really good? <laughs> oh, I'm just, I'm just checking in with your, oh, lovely, I will be in England and Scotland most of May. Oh, Cindy, really? Where are you going? I'm dying to know now. I love England and Scotland. What a lot of fun. Also, our friend Andrea Dimmick is in, um, is in the UK, and she's a great hooker. There, there's a big rag rug community over there, too. I bet you're going to find some fun stuff. Any, oh, oh, oh. Guess what? I am so sorry. Oh, please tell me you could hear some of what I just said. It must have reset itself because the volume was way down there again. I am so sorry. You know I don't touch the volume. You know I don't because it's very hard for me to find the volume. I am so sorry about that. Okay. Hopefully that's better. I can turn it even higher, but it went way down. Thanks for the update, Streamlabs. All right. Carrie, great to see you. Good evening in Tampa Bay, Florida. I ran out. Then the store ran out. Picked it up today. Ryan, what were you looking? Oh, the, um, the Mountain Dew. Oh, Chrissy, great to see you. Happy Friday. Okay, I turned the sound up, so I should be blaring at this point, right? April, good to see you. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Okay, hopefully it's all, give me some um, thumbs up or give me some notice that it changed when I hit that button. Um, Wooly Red Rug Lori in Minneapolis, great to see you. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy gallery night. So much fun. Judy, great to see you. Kaz, great to see you. Karen, you did log on. You are with your daughter. I thought you might not. Great to see you. Ticey, good to see you. Happy Friday. Brenda, happy Friday. Happy St. Patrick's Day. All of the buddies are here. Joy, happy St. Patrick's Day. Good to see you, my love. Kara, good to see you. From O'Fallon, Illinois. Oh, that sounds fun. That sounds like a pretty place. Carrie, I think I have the audio fixed. Let me know if it's better. I'm scrolling, 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 scrolling. Southern Soil, happy St. Patrick's Day. Great to see you. And Bonnie, great to see you. Happy Leprechaun's Day from beautiful Palm Coast, Florida. Oh, a beautiful Palm Coast, Florida evening. Sounds great. Okay, good. That's better. I'm so glad. Janelle, great to see you. Oh, I'm so glad. Okay. It's once in a blue moon it, moon it does that, you know? Oh, dear. All right, so let's get going. Let us get going. Let me just take a quick sip of water. This really is going to be an epic marathon of a night. Um, I'm going to try to get to as many rugs as we can. I cannot rush it. 
I cannot rush it because it's just not fair to rush it. So if I run out of time at some point, you know that we'll do this again next Friday. I won't do gallery night stuff during the week because I feel it's not quite as festive somehow in the middle of the day when we're kind of rushing through an hour. Let's see how far we get. Oh God, I'm so thirsty. I don't think, I, I don't think I'm doing well. Okay, happy gallery night. Um, let's start with, let's go over here and let's get rocking and rolling. I am going to start with, um, here we go. So this lovely piece, oh, Ryan Reed, good to see you. TGIF indeed, you're having Gin Daisies and Jigsaw Puzzle Night. Oh, that sounds like the height of, seriously, the height of sophistication. That sounds amazing. Oh, I love how you do puzzles. <laughs> Oh, I'm reading your thread too. So this is Mary Jo Taylor. She's one of my great buddies too. Her company is Northwest Folk Design. And this is a lovely rug that she did that's called Harvest Moon Owl. And this is interesting because if you are anywhere near at the chapter number 77, she's teaching this lovely pattern to that at the chapter 77. She is in, I think, Washington State. I want to say Washington State. I might be wrong, but she's, she's, is it Washington? Help me out if you know. It is a very cute rug. She does such lovely stuff. So this is the one that she's teaching, um, that she's teaching in at the chapter 77. But she's got some other ones that are out for, you know, Easter and spring that I wanted to show you um, in case you're interested. I have tons of this stuff out too. But shop everybody and pick out your favorite one, right? This one is called Bunny Lullaby. Really primitive, sweet, classic Mary Jo uh, Northwest Folk Design colors. Really lovely. This one is called Halo. Um, this is I, this is my favorite of hers uh, with a spring theme because I really like the dark antique black background. I love the little expression on the on the bunny's eyes, the kind of elongated ears, the stout little solid body, that beautiful wreath of flowers. Disconnected, interesting, isn't it? It's a nice spray, really nice, and and that dark background is so different, isn't it? This is called Halo. And this is another one of her classic spring designs, Running Rabbit. Really lovely. And, you, and and again, elongated ears, elongated body. It really is stunning. I love the padula type flowers on this. I love the three or four flowers down at the bottom kind of bowing their heads down. And look at the crocheted border on this. Have you tried a crocheted border yet? Um, I haven't, right? I do crochet a lot. I might have done like a sample, a very small sample but I haven't done I haven't done a full crochet border on any of my pieces yet. And of course, you can do all kinds of stitches once you get in there, um, crocheting. You don't you don't just have to sort of resolve it with um, the typical kind of running stitch, right? Like the single crochet. <clears throat> you could do all kinds of scallops and things like that. And sometimes Mary Jo does. Um, this is just so pretty. I do like the the little faces on her bunnies with the little closed eyes. Very pretty composition. This is funny because with this composition, the weight is kind of on top with that bow on top that's a little bit heavier than the four flowers bowing down at the bottom. And you would think with that on top, with the three balanced padula flowers, that that could be problematic. But as you can see, it's not. And you know why? Well, because she's a genius and she's fantastic with color and she's fantastic with design. Um, Sharon says, ha ha, crochet, I can't even chain properly. It, it is basically just a chain sitting on top of the whipping. I bet you can, Sharon. I bet you're being humble. And Pamela also wants to try crocheting the border. I do too. These are things I really want to get to. I can't tell you how incredibly, how, I'm not, I'm not going to keep like shooting my mouth off on a busy night, but I can't tell you how incredibly sort of liberating and what a huge weight it is off my shoulders thank you my love jane uh that we're at this point with the first book because as you can imagine um with a project this size when it, ke it keeps being revisited uh with things needed that i don't know where they are anymore because it's been so long like uh like a locker hook <laughs> it has been um it, it's like it's like an apocalypse movie right where you're just wondering like what's coming next or you're waiting for like noises on the horizon for something else awful to come at you um it's nice that we're getting to the end of it so we should be looking at a really solid release date at this point i think it's still june 1st and again please let me know if there are bookstores in your area particularly if you're in new england or the tri-state area um, or the sort of middle Atlantic states, places that I am going to go in the near future. And then I will be traveling to Wisconsin and Canada later in the year. 
Um, but let me know if you have some cute bookstores near you because I have to give them a list where I would like to do signings and we could do combined hook-ins or classes or whatever. Could have a lot of fun together, you know. Oh, Karen says, just learned how to do the herringbone stitch. Gorgeous. Oh, Cindy, you're crocheting a wrap as we speak. Isn't that appropriate? How funny is that? Thank you, Melanie. Of course she's in Portland, Oregon. What is wrong with me? That is very good information. Um, thank you so much. And Ryan says, I'm getting the um, Chihuahua piece. Oh, you're, cro you're crocheting the border on the little Chihuahua. Oh, that's perfect. He is such a little cutie. Remember we saw that little scamp? Ryan was taking a break from, it was Bar Harbor, right? And you started working on this tiny Chihuahua and you banged it out within a matter of, I think, hours. And you're going to crochet the border of that. I can't wait to see that. That will be, I think, the perfect touch. Very um, diminutive kind of scale for a tiny little happy piece like that, right? Now, this is another lovely piece. This appeared on a Facebook group, which is Rug Hooking and Punch Needle Club. And this is by Annette Lewis, L-E-W-E-S. And she wrote, here is a picture, hi, Diana. Here is a picture of my latest and largest rug I've punched for your gallery night. It's called Tulips by the Bay. I designed the pattern. It's 24 by 34, and I whipped the edges, and I have a dowel on the back for hanging. Very smart, very smart, right? Invisible hanging. I used 23 different colors of wool yarn. I used Briggs and Little Wool yarn, and in this rug, I use four ply and doubled up two ply. Interesting. That is quite thick. I, I have some four ply, but I have to admit I have not punched with it. I punch with two ply and three ply. That is good information. So she doubles up her two ply Briggs and Little, which has a little bit of a higher twist than the three ply that I usually dye and sell. But she also has the four ply that she uses. She must be, it's right here. She says, I, I use a number 10 regular Oxford punch needle. Fantastic. Thanks for hosting gallery night. I did, enjoyed it last night and seeing what everyone is making. And she says, Teddy was entertaining too. Oh, Annette, thank you. He is, if, 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 if he is one thing, it is entertaining. He's the sweetest boy. He's down there with Gabby right now. He actually called her. Um, you know, he brings like a briefcase with him to school. This is like the raging autism, right? It's so cute. And he's got some of his bits and bobs in there that he needs. And you know, they make the kids carry a laptop back and forth to school. And you know that if anything happens to that laptop, you know who's responsible for that, right? For the money that, you, that it, whatever the retail is on it. Sometimes he's got to carry his like, um, um, a xylophone. I mean, it's just insane. So he carries his little briefcase on the bus and he called my mom this morning from the bus and he said, Gami, I can't wait to see you tonight. I've been waiting three weeks to be able to come and see you. It's been that busy here. And uh, and, and he said, I got to go. The bus doors are closing. But he is so cute. What a sweet person. Oh, Andrea says, that looks um, so neatly punched. Andrea, you know what? This is very neatly punched, but this is the, and I'm doing quotes, wrong side. So this is the side that you would see as you were punching. And typically with punch, because you do it in reverse, um, you know, your your pile, your loops are on the other side, but many people like this kind of punching. I, I never remember what the name of this is, and I always call it channel punching. And I, I coined that, and it's not a real phrase, and I'm always for a, at a loss as to what to call it, that, that we all have the same language for. But this is the so-called wrong side, and it is neater, because these loops are flat against the surface backing, and the pile would be on the other side. So <clears throat> with something like this, if I were going to use, she uses the 10 needle. If I were punching this, I would be using the 10 needle and I'd be using one or two washers, the O-rings. And the reason I'd be doing that is because there's absolutely no reason when you know you're using the wrong side, there's absolutely no reason to um, have any extra pile on the other side. You want some pile, right? Because you want to be sure that the loops are in there. You don't want it flat on both surfaces because they might like pop out, right? But you don't want a high pile and you don't need a high pile because uh, then you're just wasting wool. So really beautiful piece in that. Really lovely. Um, Pamela says, I like both sides, but good that both sides can be shown. Absolutely. Such beautiful colors. What a great springtime motif. It has a very Canadian look for me. I love the swirls in the sky. I love the sort of alternating whites and blues. They have kind of a paisley effect or a cornucopia effect. Very good graphic sky. I love the white waves. I love the tr white trim on the houses. Very neat and clean. That happy sailboat, the laundry line. Do you see how on the left-hand side, there are some pink flowers that are raised, 
right? So she either hooked those or she punched those from the other side to get that high um, pile. Sus, I love the spirits who march to their own drum. Go Teddy. Absolutely. It's so true, isn't it? So true. He is, a, he is a drummer marcher. That is for sure. And ironically, he said today that he wants to quit the band because he just doesn't enjoy it. And it's really boring. And they never let him play his drum, which costs a lot. And they always want him to play the xylophone, which he doesn't want to play at all. Isn't life frustrating? Even when you're a kid, isn't it frustrating when you're a kid and you, you don't have any choices? Do you remember that? Do you remember how that felt to not have a lot of choices and to wear clothes that someone else buys you and to comb your hair or cut your hair in the style uh, that someone else chooses. I try to give them freedom without being ridiculous. I try to give them freedom with full understanding that life is made up of rules and without rules, it's just all chaos. But outside of that, outside of the small amount of rules I think I have, you have got to let kids to some extent do their thing and be their own, be their own people. Uh, otherwise, you're not setting them up for success and you're doing a huge injustice to them. Pamela says, I was wondering if the roses were French knots. Oh, you know what, Pamela? They could be French knots. That's a really good thought. They're very neat. It reminds me of candle wicking. Very, very neat. Very pretty. I like the different colors of roofs, too, on these little houses. Really charming. This is a this is a composition that's filled with multiples, right? Multiples of houses, multiples of laundry on the line, multiples of swirls in the sky, multiples of knotted flowers, multiples of tulips. Deborah, great to see you. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Oh, well, you'll be able to watch later. I know I have something of yours in the show that is really lovely. But multiples are very strong, aren't they? Another thing that's working with this, I think, is you is having a different um, um, window, diff different uh, windows on each house, right? So like two on one, three on the next, one on, in different shapes of windows and different numbers of panes. I think that's really interesting and it's helping the composition along because while you have um, multiples and it's a good, solid, very stable composition, very tidy, um, it is good to have some variety and there is still quite a bit of variety. It's a very good balance. Annette, you did a really, really stellar job. That is an extraordinary extraordinary piece. Let me move on to the next Kathleen Lynch. Oh, these are so pretty. Framed and in their places. The last two are at the framers. So you are doing a series of these lovely. These are not yard longs, I don't think. I don't think they're 36 inches long, but they are the long skinny ones, kind of like the barrel staves that used to go above the door. Really, really lovely. So pretty, right, Lori? So pretty. Uh, Cat's Gallery says all Karen Carpenter wanted to do was play her drum, but they made her sing instead. Is that true? I mean, she is uh, obviously one of the great, greatest female singers of all time. What a tone. I did not know that. Isn't that funny? Melanie says, me too, Sharon. To quote Deanna, mine usually like, looks like a pig's breakfast. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that you're using that. It's so descriptive, isn't it? It's descriptive without saying something super naughty. That's why I love to go to that. Oh, I didn't know that. I love Karen Carpenter. Love Karen Carpenter. So this is just a really lovely piece. Um, and Kathleen says, I love doing them, but I'm running out of places to hang them. They, Oh, that's right. These are Cindy Gay's stair risers done with wool yarn. This one is really smart. I really love the flowers on the two sides, so welcome. And I love that kind of dandelion flower, right? That kind of downy puff that's above the M. That's a really cool way to handle a font. And this font is so friendly. Isn't it friendly and welcoming? Just looking at this font. That one is really lovely. And if you love that, you're going to love this one too, right? So beautiful. She said, I did this small piece with wool yarn. I thoroughly enjoy working with yarn. No worries about twisting up the loops and having to stop and cut noodles. Absolutely, that's true. There's a lot to be said for yarn. You know, it springs right out of the cake, right on your side, pull right from the middle, and it's like, it's infinite, and it's until you're done. Uh, it's great to use wool yarn, and it really does look the same, doesn't it? This is lovely, too. I love these stylized dandelions, and I love the rose in the center. I can see why you are really, really enjoying doing these stair risers. They are beautiful, classic, they're not quite primitive. They're a bit more romantic than primitive. They are really lovely, and I love how you're having them framed at the framer. Doesn't that take the aggravation out of it, right? And you know they're going to come out perfectly and be such great heirlooms for all of time. Really, really pretty. 
Oh, and this is the one I think that you're working on now, Kathleen, right? This is, these are so pretty. I love the color in this one. I might stretch this one out a little bit. You know, it's really a great idea. You're going to turn us all on to sterilizers. It's really a great idea because, you know, whether or not you can use sterilizers or, or if you live in a ranch, maybe, maybe you can't use them at all, but it really is a good idea to use them in different places like this over doors and windows and things. Um, I wonder if you could even use them, you use some of these sterilizers for small windows as a pelmet. You know, pelmets, they're like the wooden kind of box uh, valens, and they're usually covered with uh, fabric, right? But they are actually made of wood or fiberboard or something. They're very st structured. And you put them over your window, and something like this would hang so beautifully on a pelmet. Really, really great. And Brenda, oh, look at this. Brenda sent this beautiful piece. Diana, by no means do I expect you to use all of these or none of these, just sharing in case they fall into the evening topic. Are you kidding me? Of course I used all of them. These are fantastic, fantastic. Pamela says they would look uh, lovely hung over a doorway or a window. Yeah, isn't that funny? Jinx. Um, you know, it, and it's so fun to find different places to hang stuff, even like over a mirror right? Or you could have two, like the long way, you know, if you had like a, a mirror, like in the hall or whatever, and you put two the long way like this, could be really interesting. You could really create vignettes with these, with these smaller, um, um, kind of stretched drugs, stretched shapes like that. Interesting, isn't it? Because you don't even really need a pattern for a riser. You could just get some backing, swirl it out, write some words. You know how you always see when you go to gift stores? I saw this last night. I was at a restaurant. You always see, um, reminds me of that, that commercial that is so funny for the insurance where it's like, are you becoming like your parents? And one of them, the girl had, had um, she had this, this thing that she hung up. It was, it said like, uh, breathe, live, love, breathe, something like that. And the guy said to her, do you, you, you don't need a plaque that reminds you to breathe. He threw it in the trash and she got so upset. But but some some of these are very pretty. And I saw one last night that was long and it was kind of like one of these uplifting um, quotes like live, love, laugh and be happy, like something like that. Not that, but something like that. You know, you could really put together a bunch of words on sterilizers that are like, you know, scatter joy, right? The Nathaniel Hawthorne quote and little, little short phrases that just remind you about things that are important to you. That would be a lot of fun and very fast projects, right? Um, April says her favorite is also yarn. Let's look at this pineapple. Brenda's pineapple is over the top. Let me look at this. I'm scrolling back down. Let's see. So Brenda says um, the pineapple rug is a Sears port design, pineapples and pennies. Oh, see the pennies in the middle, right? So see the three pennies in the middle. I took the liberty of changing the circles to squares. Okay, interesting. So I bet around the border there were also um, circles for pennies, right? And I like this. You know who this reminds me of? Mackenzie Childs, right? With a black checkerboard. Very stylish. Very smart. You know, I like the kind of L border that you did on both sides. That is really unexpected. That is really lovely. How different. Look at these colors. Pamela says, I think a lot of people might have some leftover fabric on which you could hook risers. They're not that wide and they don't have to. That's absolutely true. Um, they don't have to be uh, too long. Just You're right. Just a little pop of color, right? Watch your step by step um, would be a great. Oh, watch your step would be a great stair riser. Isn't that funny? That would be great. I think a Dorothy Parker quote would be fun too, Sharon. See, we should come up with some great, it's hard to find quotes that are short and great, but we should try to compile some because this would be a great idea to share some of these great quotes for stairs or just put them in places around your house. And then the great thing about it is instead of having something from TJ Maxx that's printed with words, you've created it yourself and you got to choose your colors, right? You got to make it just the way that you wanted. Nice, right? And Ryan says, pineapples are so graphic. Love the checkerboard. 1980s fun. Absolutely, Ryan. Leave it to you to, to, to make that um, jump, right? It's super 80s. The colors are super 80s. This looks like every Swatch watch that I owned. Mind the gap, Karen. That's a good one. Can you hear the voice on the London Underground? Mind the gap. It's, it's like the haunting disembodied voice. Um, <laughs> 
Sharon, what fresh hell is this? Oh God, I could use I could use that one over every door. <laughs> that is so funny. See, we're on a roll now. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Brenda, the pineapples were, were just insanely great. Here's another great piece by Brenda. This is a Dion, Dion Fitzpatrick design, and she said, I made it into a pillow, and I used batik material for the backing. Not easy uh, putting that putting in that cording that made a great pillow back. No, it never is easy, is it? It is good to have the cord around the edge. It gives it a little bit more integrity. It gives it a more finished look. Jiggle, jiggle the handle. Oh, Carrie, that's perfect. That's perfect. Jiggle the handle. Oh my God, that's so funny. Isn't that so true though that in the bathroom, we're not gonna, we're, this, this show is not gonna go down the commode, I promise, no commode humor. Um, although it's my favorite kind of humor. Um, isn't it funny how in the bathroom you find the most signs? Like, I forget which one is at my sister's house, but it's something about holding the handle down for X amount of seconds. Like, I find that the most, like, messages are written in other people's bathrooms where there's something quirky happening with, with plumbing. Right, we'll leave it at that. But isn't that funny? That would be really funny, jiggle the handle. Cording is always difficult around the edges, but it does give your whip stitching. You know, you can whip stitch over cording, like the cotton cording, or you can just, you can fold the edge, right? And make it into like a little, a little um, kind of lip and just whip over that, right? Wouldn't be a perfect cord, but with the whipping, you can really force it to be very cylindrical and remember to flush. There you go. <laughs> I love, I really love this idea. I really do. These would be so fast too. So much fun. Um, this is really beautiful. It's a beautiful Dion Fitzpatrick design. And um, yeah, doing anything into a pillow gives you that extra layer of uh, sort of aggravation and work. But it is so well worth it because it's nice having a nice utilitarian piece um, that isn't on the floor, right? Or or on the wall, something that you can really enjoy. I love sitting against my my hooked pillows because you know that they're really durable, right? And and they're comfortable. This is the back of it with the batik fabric. Isn't this the perfect back with the with the fish theme having the dolphins there? Perfect colors too. That is really, really well done. And just so you know, right, I've got to promote um, on the Ribbon Candy Hooking channel that you're watching right now, I do have a I do have a video specifically on finishing pillows. So just so you know that exists, that's there. Oh, this is another lovely one, Brenda. This is your own design. So you did all the color planning on this yourself, and you were trying to use up your worms. You had cut more material um, for the size. Now I have more worms. How, and, she, and, and, and Brenda says, do they ever go away? Right, because you have a bunch of worms. She used them to make this. It's the perfect size for what she's got it on. And then she's like, but I accidentally caught, I cut some extra worms and now I have extra worms again, right? It's the gift that keeps on giving. It's so easy to do that. So funny. Ryan says, um, reminds me of don't swim in the toilet, don't pee in our pool. That's right. Don't don't put the pee in pool is one I see at, at pools a lot. Boy, that makes me not even want to get in when it reminds me of that, right? And all that chlorine. Pimla says the colorful fish are perfect for a neutral decorating scheme. That is so true. Isn't it great to have a nice pop of color in an otherwise pretty um, subdued room or room with very controlled colors, right? That's an absolutely great point because so many of us, we love the color of our pieces. We love making colorful, electric, and exciting pieces, but you like the house itself to be pretty neutral and livable, um, and not like um, completely assaulting and shocking. I like assaulting and shocking, but I know most people like things to be pretty um, um, calming, right? Peaceful and calming environment. And it's great to have those great pops of color, uh, particularly where, when it is peaceful and calming. They stand out all the more. This is the this is the fourth one I think that Brenda sent, and I have to say this is my favorite one. I, I, we're seeing this hanging more often, this device for hanging more often, and it really is um astonishing so this is a carol feeney design i color planned with most of her wool wow wow i'm looking at it now the purple looks like shoes oh my gosh it does look like high heels a little bit well that's okay that's a good thing for it to look like it's a beautiful design very organic um this is one of my faves too i actually i think i have one more from you um, I absolutely love this. It's got kind of hints of um, Macintosh, the Scottish designer, like the triangles on the side, the the kind of um, mashup between blocked out spaces, right? So that green bar with those, um, the very sort of flux wavy 
black lines within it. And then to the right of that, the vertical triangle. So the play of horizontal against vertical. Then down at the bottom, we have vertical again, the yellow with the black lines. And then the circle is a game changer, right? The circle stops you, right? All bets are off with the circle. That is the main motif. And then on the left, we've got vertical again, but very wavy lines. It's a very interesting piece. It reminds me of the way that Rittermere works. Many of their designs work the same way. It's like we have a, cro a cropped kind of compass rose design in the center, an almost like postage stamp design around it, bits and pieces, small bits and pieces that you then populate with either vertical or horizontal directional um, shape-driven space filling. Right? And then you color it up like this with a really unusual color palette, a very offbeat yellow, lots of different indigo blues, two shades of purple, neither of them like expected, purple on the, the plumage of the bird as well. The shocking orange is the poison in this piece, a little bit of red on the left hand side and a little bit of this sort of coppery brown color, right? That's the dull. So we've got dark light, dull bright for sure in this piece. And this is really something that you want to strive for it, particularly if you are not used to you doing your own color planning, dark light, dull, bright. We haven't said it in a long time. It's a very big deal. Ryan says this, Ryan Reed says this colorful geometric is beautiful. It, it, absolutely. It's a favorite of mine too. It's so, you know, it just goes to show really we've got one motif here and it's the bird and everything else is a shaped out kind of Art Nouveau take on um, what could possibly be like an inspiring kind of Tiffany glass window, right? Doesn't it have that feel too because it's outlined? Oh, I'm taking a quick sip. I have an awful sore throat. I hope I'm not getting sick. Um, Judy says, I love this. The colors and compositions are, are perfect. Color and composition is absolutely perfect. Abso it has a bit of an evening feel for me too. It's almost like there's light coming through that, like, like there's a yellow stained glass window with the purple. And it's almost like there's night around it, right? It's very evocative. It's very different. Really love this piece. Super whimsical. Ryan says, I like assaulting and shocking too. Maximalism for the win. Ryan, we are on the same page. I've been reading uh, more and more on this subject lately because you know how for so long, I'm going to come to Brenda's uh, last piece, which is that horse. You know, for so long, it, it was like, in terms of like public taste, the, the style of public taste that was being pushed down everyone's throat was like streamlined and minimalist. And that is for a lot of people. But I felt so much in the minority for such a long time being absolutely a maximalist. I love stuff. I'm not a pig, but I love stuff. I love vignettes and, and, and more, 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 more. Um, I just love having my things about me, you know, and we are the pendulum swung and now people are proudly stating again, I'm also a maximalist. I love my stuff. I hope I get more stuff soon, you know, especially I think going into summer when there's going to be all kinds of flea markets and yard sales and all that. Yeah, the, Kirsten, that is a good point. The, the last composition was super relaxed. It had a very lilting quality to it. It was not rigid at all. It was not structured at all. And in fact, let me just come back to that just a little bit. It was half structured because it there was like the partial circle. It was all, wasn't like it was incomplete. It was like it was interrupted. Um, and that's, that's a very different thing. So many bits and pieces coming in here. It has a real collage feel to it. Um, really, really great. I love how the border around the yellow circle is that light color change in kind of mottled yellowy, sorry, white blue. You see what I mean? That little stripey of, of the whiter color. I like that because imagine if it was dark, that one little strip, that one little curve as a dark color, I think would sadden the piece. Not, not, in, not emotionally, just in terms of language, right? But with it being light, it brightens and gladdens the whole piece up. Just that one little turn of color. Being as light as it is, I think that really, really helps keep the piece uh, lively. I like the way the bird piece is hung as well. Me too, these little clippies that you're putting on these bars. This is a big thing lately. It's like a little curtain rod. This is really clever. I'm still really tempted. I want to get one like this and I want to dig into, talk about Max Maximalist, one of my many jars of like vintage and antique buttons. And I would like to glue one little sparkly button or a little Bakelite button on the tab of each little clippy, right, hanging down from the circle rings. Wouldn't that be pretty? Depending on your piece, that could really be a nice addition. There's probably lots of pretty things that you could attach to the clips if you wanted more bling, 
right? It's it, again, if you, if you don't like a lot of bling, um, it, it's absolutely perfect the way it is. Andrea says the light is echoed around the bird. Yeah, one more one more time. It is a great piece. It is that lighter color is echoed around the bird, but it's almost like she chose the slightly darker mo modeled parts. Because when you've got a mo modeled piece of wool, you know you, you know the feeling when you're sitting there and you're like, I want I want just the darker bits or just the bits with this color for this part, and you're really kind of cherry picking what parts of your wool you're going to dig into and rip up. And um, I think that's what she did here because it looks like the same piece of wool echoing around the bird, like Andrea said, but then the outer ring looks a little bit lighter. And I think she probably did the sort of cherry picking with the wool to get the same color, but it's kind of like as it rings out, it gets brighter and lighter. What a piece. And this is the this is the last piece uh, that Brenda sent. This She hooked this 19 years ago from mostly as-is materials, number six and eight cut. It's called Pony Boy. She says, I don't, you know, we knew who the designer was on this because I remember Pony Boy. Let me know if you remember who the designer is. I remember, I remember the name. I remember the pattern. I don't remember the designer off the top of my head. Um, I don't know the designer. It was, a, I was a very new hooker at the time. Well, this was out of the park and obviously looking at this piece, you would, Brenda, you would be able to say to yourself, this really is my craft, right? I found my thing. Um, really, really pretty. Linda H says the hooks are great. You can quickly change pieces. You know, that's a great thought. I didn't even think of that. You can absolutely quickly change your seasonal pieces out, your holiday pieces out, your, your words out, right? What fresh hell is this? Could be swapped the next day for something even more poignant. <laughs> depending on how life is going, right? Brenda, those were absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for sending. Linda, you finished this, the piece with the bugs. We were ogling this last, I think, last gallery night. You wrote, Linda wrote, Hi, everyone. I finished my yard-long beetle project. It was done using acrylic and novelty yarns on burlap. And my kooky bird, oh, we're not at the kooky birds yet. Let's look at this for a minute. I absolutely love this piece. We were marked on this. We were all enjoying it. And she was only one or two bugs into it. But it really is lovely. I love I love the blocky pop art quality to it. I love the different bugs. I love the filigree quality of the little legs and little antennae. All of that, right? Abso oh, Brenda, you're there. You change your pieces out often. Beautiful pieces, Brenda. Just beautiful. Um, yeah, and you know, and, and I love that Linda designs her own pieces and they're, they're so quirky. They're so fun. Your subjects are always so different. I love the background colors that you chose. Just look at just the background colors. What an unusual color palette. I love the patterning on the bugs. I just, I just love this piece. I really love this piece. It is super quirky, really fun. I'm, I'm just looking at it a little bit while you are. I really love it. Oh, this is a close-up. This looks like some sparkle farkles on this, doesn't it? That looks like it's sparkling a little bit, a little bit of color change happening there. It looks like there's, I was going to say wool and, no, I think it's just yarn. I think it's just yarn. And it is so, yeah, I think, Pamela, I think that is sparkly. Really gorgeous. And, you know, it's such a cool subject to do something. Love those beetles. That's funny, April. Were there four of them? Let me go back and check. Nope, there's five. I guess Pete Best is there too, right? He <laughs> wiggled his way back in. Um, so pretty. I love the spark sparkle yarn. The Rhode Islander in me almost came out just now to say sparkle yarn. Um, I stopped myself. <laughs> I, li I like the border too. It's very unexpected. The gray color is very unexpected. It looks like that's like you're, uh, you've got felt or something like you're uh, putting the, budding the material right up to it, and maybe you're going to fold it down and under. Very smart. Really pretty. It's great to do a piece like this because we're talking about multiples again. And when you've got multiples of something, you can go crazy with color, with the background, with the shadows, with the legs. Some legs can be black, some legs can be blue, with the bodies, with the patterning. The reason you can is because we're talking about multiples. And as soon as your eye looks at this piece, there's five beetles. And you know that, that you get it. You get it right away. And no matter how far you kind of um, take or mutate um, the idea, the color palette, no matter how far you push, you're still going to read it as the five beetles. So you can push very far. As Linda has, the colors are absolutely beautiful. Ryan says the bugs are super cool pop art. 
um, but make it uh, make it geeky. Absolutely, it is geeky. That's what I like about it. It's such an unexpected subject. I like things like this that are so different. And I have to admit, I do love looking at like taxidermy and bugs. I know that's not for everybody. I do love, not touching, um, but looking. I love looking at bugs. They are so um, awkward and prehistoric looking, aren't they? When you look at a living bug, like scuttling along, it looks just like fossils of bugs at museums from, you know, thousands of years ago. It's just, it's incredible. They are incredible little things. They're going to outlive us, aren't they? That sounds so sinister, but that's what everybody says. Oh, and this is another super beauty. So these, this is uh, your kooky birds, a 13 by 28, really pretty, using the same material. So still using acrylic and novelty yarns on burlap. And you're right, I think my next project may be, oh, I'm going to show you in a minute. Let's look at this first. This has so much character. It's almost like a little parade of birds, isn't it? It's like, again, Linda, you're so good at multiples. You're so good at putting together compositions with multiples. Celia is doing a bug right now. How fun. Oh, how fun. We're going to have to see that. That'll be a lot of fun. Love the bugs. I love the birds, too. I love how there's one little guy flying and the rest are kind of having a walkathon, right? Flamingo in the lead. It looks like there's a pink pelican in the in the rear. I love how there's different colors. With the exception of the flamingo, um, the colors are really whimsical. And I love that. Again, because we're talking about multiples, you can go really far with the colors. Look at the green bird who's second to last on the right. Look at the swirls like um, on, his, on his little head and on his little tail. Look at the different colored feet scurrying along. Isn't that exciting? Isn't this an exciting piece? And don't you love the colored stripies there too? Doesn't it remind you of like confetti dyeing or, or hooking confetti style? Just bits and pieces here and there of different colors. Oh, Cindy, it is so perfect for a beach house. Kaz, it is really cheerful. It is cheerful. It's such a happy piece to look at. All the birds on the move, right? And it's it, there's like a feeling of unity here, like it is a celebration or a parade. They're all headed the same way. They all have the same thought or the same object in mind. I mean, it really is a cheerful piece. I love the tail feather on the green bird. It is such a, it's like electric, right? It's like he had the curling iron out, Pamela. He's so cute. I think that's my favorite one, that little green bird. So whimsical with their big fat bellies and stuff too. They are too cute. So Linda said, I think, oh, this is a close-up. Let me show you the close-up. Really, really great colors. Linda, you do such a great job. I love the piece that you sent for the Design Like Book today. I sent Linda an email, and I can't really, I can't really show those pieces right now because they will come out in the book. But, oh my God, wait till you see the pieces that people are hooking for this Design Like Book. And if you feel like hooking a piece, you're not too late. I can still send you a design. <clears throat> it depends on how fast of a hooker you are. I'll need it by like May, June, something like that. But it's still a ways away. I can't believe how quickly some of these have been done. Linda, yours is incredible, just incredible. Oh, another close-up. We get a close-up of the, look at these novelty, right? The red inside the flamingo um, wing. I think I have that. That's kind of the red and the grapey kind of fuchsia. Um, that's like a nice sort of eyelash. I have, I have so many of the eyelash ones I pick up at the dollar stores and all of that. Uh, Ryan Reed says cockroaches and Cher who will outlive us all. Isn't Cher dating someone who is like, um, I mean, not, I mean, good, good for her. Love is love. Uh, but I think she's dating someone who's like 50 years younger than her, <laughs> that kind of thing. Maybe not 50, maybe like 49, but uh, good for her. Love, love is love, right? Love doesn't, I saw a quote from her, love doesn't know math. But yeah, I think she might outlive us all. Mm. Sorry, I keep taking water breaks. I'm really struggling with a sore throat right now. And Linda said, I think this is going to be my next project because this barred owl, I visited the yard last week and you got a beautiful picture of him. Look at him. He looks like he looks like he caught you in the window and his head spun around, did a 360 like wah, wah. He's coming for you. Really pr pretty ba uh, barred owl. I just recently learned that there is a difference between a barred owl and a barn owl. I, I've only ever heard the word and I don't know a lot about birds. And I just assumed it was always barn owl. Uh, but yeah, when I when I learned there was such a thing as a barred owl, I felt like a fool. But uh, yeah, you can't know everything, right? This will be a beautiful next composition, Linda. It's absolutely beautiful. 
Um, Ryan says, I love the, the horizontal lines, makes the background move and the color changes. It absolutely does. That's a great thing to point out, right? Because having those horizontal lines really advances the story of this piece. All these little birds on the move, right? The color just adds more energy and direction. Th th those are great comments, Ryan. Those are really great comments. Really smart, beautiful. So this is Juliet. Remember I told you she's in Thailand right now? She's with, with uh, her group called the Glass, I think the Glass Dragons. And uh, she's doing a great tour of Thailand. We'll look at the pictures together when she gets back. She found some interesting things that I, I think will be interesting for us too, to look at at outdoor markets and things like that. Very exotic. And you probably recognize the dragon that she did that she brought to give to her host, her host family. And these are them. This is the couple that is hosting. And she made this for them. What a gift, right? What an absolute treasure. They look so happy. Um, really exciting and I'm really excited to hear more about this trip uh, and look at the pictures together she is having a spectacular time so more on that Jennifer Pop sent this and she wrote I finished this yesterday it's my design called the eddies I wanted to practice movement in my hooking this piece is 100% wool yarn Jennifer this is another I'm loving these abstract pieces that I'm seeing lately I, it's just lovely it has a ton of motion you certainly achieved your aim of practicing motion it has got it's got a few things going on that I think are exceptional so on the top left it has a corner that is fairly literal it looks like speckled sand right doesn't that doesn't that seem inviting after the snowy and cold winter um, that 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 little stretch of sand is quite literal and then we've got a row of very stylized very Japanese looking waves right standing up like curling paisleys beautiful light aqua color right right against the sand really smart and then we immediately come down diagonally to a bit of a froth a white froth like the the motion the power of the ocean right and then we see the eddies right these little sort of whirlpools or little hurricane um, hot spots of, of movement in the water four different eddies right and with each one you get different movement different reach different color combos they are similar patterns we're looking at an, another composition that is very multiples rich really lovely i love the the color change in color going up the center that has a little bit of rose and purple and periwinkle in it i really like that because that's really playing against the cooler blues in terms of being an opposite it's really playing against the cool blues and the variety of blue in this piece is amazing because this could almost pass as a if not monochromatic duochromatic um, composition because we're really looking at blue and a little bit of tan but tan is a neutral Right, so we don't always include neutral colors when we're talking about color schemes. Um, that the what looks like a sock yarn in the middle, that that color changing with a little bit of warmth and red and purple. To me, that's the second color over the tan color. I think it is exceptional. And April says very pretty abstract. Great job achieving motion, really. And Andrea says I think I'm drawn to abstracts too. I agree. It's it's really. When you're looking at an abstract, it really is, all, and I say this all the time, right? I'm like a broken record. It's about how you feel, and it's about how it makes you feel to look at it. And while this is an abstract, she's giving us this great cue. Number one, the color of the water, but then the top left, the sand, she's giving us a couple of cues. So we do have a starting point. We do have a comfort level. We aren't just floating through, through the air going, what is it? It's really water, and that part's clear. And in the title, the eddies is very helpful too because that's a super evocative title. It really puts you there on the edge of the water, right? Looking for these little these little whirlpools of of movement. Jennifer, this is a beautiful piece, super 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 well done. This is the piece that I received. So so it was in the slideshow, Candice. I forgot. I, this is what Candice sent me. And look at the hanging device, right? This is so cool. The clippies. This came in the mail today, Candace. I just like lost my mind. I just lost my mind. I've been so emotional lately with everything and just everything just makes me cry. It's just, which feels so good, you know, when it feels good to, to cry and be crazy and emotional. Uh, that is like my, my prerogative as a female and my prerogative as a human being, right? This got me. Everything I received in the mail today got me in the best possible way. I just love this. I can't believe that you were ever uh, sort of seesawing with like, should I send it? Should I not? This is just fantastic. I wish I thought of this. I love this. 
Um, I don't even like that Van Gogh piece I'm doing. I'm hoping I'm hoping to have a big comeback at some point, a feeling for it. But this I love. I love all the Van Goghs that have come in. This is so different. And it ought to be different, right? They all ought to be different. They are all very different. And they're all coming together for the um, show next month in April, right? Because it got washed out of the Hartford Library, which is still closed because of a lot of water damage, pipes exploding all over much of the library, like underwater. Uh, so we moved, just so you know, if you if you missed that, we had to move the Van Gogh exhibit to April. Uh, April 16th is the opening at the Hartford um, Hartford the Charter Oak Center in Hartford, Connecticut. And um, I'm working on that with Pierre Sylvain, the familiar name and a great buddy of mine. And uh, that's where the story rugs are gonna be hanging too. So absolutely wonderful. Candace, this is fantastic. People are loving this piece just, just as I would expect, right? This is such a great piece by Colleen. This, you know, Colleen does a lot of, of um, great seasonal pieces that she hangs on the door. And I just love this. This is a great springtime piece, a shaped piece, right? She obviously meant it for the door. It's perfect on the door. It's a great, it's a great alternative to like a little wreath or a little bouquet, right? It's just a great piece. Um, I really love it. It's hard to do it. I'm gonna take that back. It's not hard to do shaped pieces. It's just a little harder to do shaped pieces. It's a great challenge, but this is a smaller piece. Don't you love her door knocker too? And I love the doors that have these cutouts like this. Oh, I just love that. Um, absolutely beautiful. Welcome spring, right? This is just shouting welcome spring. And I love the uh, whipping around the edge or maybe, you know, it might not be whipping. It might be felt. It might be, uh, it might be, I think it is. It might be like mounted on felt. That makes a lot of sense. What a great piece. Pamela says, I have an art teacher friend in Georgia that does chairs for charity. That rug would be perfect. Oh, isn't that funny? That rug would be perfect. Oh, all of the Van Gogh chair rugs would be perfect. Colleen, that is so pretty. What a great rug. And Beverly, you are another super, super, super prolific artist, always doing something amazing. And on this, you wrote, completely finished. I don't mind whip stitching, but there has to be an easy way to do the corners and to make them look nice. I agree. Um, yeah, the more square your corners are, you know, it's just, I mean, th this looks very nice. I would not second guess yourself. This looks very nice. Um, Beverly says, I can't seem to find a video or instructions or any books on how to get them to look good. I think I'm going to switch to using binding twill. Um, Beverly, I have to do that. You know, the, I did a binding video with the whipping, but I think it was an oval rug. I'm not sure actually, I'm not sure. I definitely had a rectangle rug with the whale one that I did as a commission a few years ago. Um, you know, the key to this, and it's easier said than done, the key to uh, whipping the border, because of course, whether you are folding back and you're whipping around your fold, or whether you are, are doing the cording, right? Regardless of what you've got going on, you are whipping and you are creating kind of like, um, um, a little border, like a little round uh, column-like border all the way around. When you get to the corners, the, the key is to put less uh, stitches in because if you're putting as many stitches around the corners as you are on the sides, it's going to get um, too dense, right? It's going to get dense. It's going to want to buckle, buckle up. And that's the thing. So it is fiddly. There isn't, it's not a science. There is no math to it. You just have to kind of pace yourself, keep your whipped stitches neat, flat, and even. Be consistent. Because, oh, Melanie says Cindy Gay has a good video on this subject. So that'll be good to check. And Andrea, too, Cindy Gay has a great tutorial on corners. Perfect. There we go. Um, yeah, you, when you get there, you know, just make sure that you are that you are staying very consistent with the stitches you've got down. And when you get to the corner, try to give yourself a little breathing room and space them out a little bit more, fan them out a little more. And I know you don't want that white cord showing, you don't want the backing showing, so you have to cover it up. But for me, it involves a lot of fooling around, using my finger and my fingernail to kind of spread them and ease them around the corner, encourage them to lay flat, because um, I don't want any of the white or any of the backing showing, but at the same time, I don't want extra stitches in there either. It's just fiddly. Sounds like you should be checking out that Cindy Gay video because it sounds like that's going to be the perfect answer to this question. And she's already made the video, so that's perfect. Kess says, I was told to put a cup 
at the corner to round the corners before hooking. Oh, I see what you mean. So if you were actually going to, hold on, let me come to you. I think I'm getting a cold and I'm having stuff like this happening while we're running the show. Um, so Kaz, what you're saying is that if you, when you have something with a uh, square or rectangle corners to the pattern itself, you actually use a cup to round the corners. Is that what you mean? So that when it comes time for um, whipping later, you already have the rounded corners because that would certainly work. That's really smart. Um, that's a great idea too, using a cup or a paper cup. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? And if, and if you're happy with rounded corners to begin with, that, that saves you a lot of trouble because then, then, then you don't have corners, right? You don't have corners. If it's a rounded corner, that's like an oxymoron, isn't it? Pamela says, Kaz, I'm taking notes. <laughs> Kaz is a teacher. She's a good one to take notes from, right? Now, this, this is another one of these stellar pieces of the evening. Deborah, I'm not sure if you're still on because remember she had to run. Um, she was working on this t on this last time we talked. This is a piece that's going into the show with Pierre. Okay, Kaz, that's just what you meant. See, you're very good at teaching. I knew just what you meant. Deborah showed us this um, grapefruit leaves, right? Um, I think it, during the last gallery night, because remember, didn't she say she was taking a road trip? I feel like it was from Arizona to California, something like that, wasn't it? And and um, she said um, they stopped and and they saw these bunnies on the side of the road you near know, these grapefruit uh, leaves, trees, leaves, and they were like nibbling the leaves. And she said, "Oh, what a great moment!" And she decided to make a story rug for it. And um, yeah, and I mean, I I think I'm remembering this right from the last gallery night. But now it's finished and it's going to be on its way here for the April show with Pierre at the uh, Charter Col uh, Cultural Cultural Cho Ho. -ho. Downhill Fast uh, Oak Center. You know what I mean, right? And um, and and Deborah says, completely finished. I don't mind whip stitching, but there has... Oh, no, wait a minute. No, Deborah said, I finished my story rug, 9 by 12. I think I'll call it Grapefruit Leaves. Let me know if anyone has another name to suggest. This is my second piece and my first design. I used monk's cloth and wool with a little yarn for the facial features and needle fell to the nose and the inside of the ear. Oh, can't you see how nice and velvety that is? The nose and the inside of the ear. That looks all velvety, right? She needle felted that. So with like roving. So that is super soft, um, mushy, cushy, and velvety. Isn't that lovely? And she says, for my next piece, I'm going to be using a pattern in t-shirts. I have a lot to learn. It doesn't look like you have a lot to learn, Deborah. It looks like you're doing amazingly great. My loops could be more consistent. My whip stitching could be better. You know what? Only if you want them to. I always say that only if you want them to, only if it bothers you. I'm looking at both of those things and it's not bothering me at all. I'm thinking this is a fantastic piece. This is your second piece and you designed this piece yourself. Yeah, I, I think you're doing great. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd be super, super happy with where you are. You work on the things that are bothering you, but just know that you're killing it. Um, and you said it did turn out like I was hoping though. That's one that's one thing I really like about this. You can be creative and make something nice even though your technical skills need work. Absolutely. Some people are 0% technical and they just go for the feel of the thing and the flow of the thing. And maybe maybe if that's you, then you never worry about the technical stuff. And yeah, I mean, if you were entering it into a, te a technical rug cooking show, that'd be a problem. But you're just making them to enjoy them and we're enjoying them. So you be as technical as you want. You decide how much of you is technical and how much of you is creative and you honor those parts of yourself. Don't compare yourself to other people and don't listen to other people saying you've got to be better at this or that. No, you don't. No, you don't. This is your hobby and your love and your passion and your joy. You do just what you want to do. Nobody's going to tell you uh, what you need to work on. I'm certainly not. I really like on this piece, I love the leaves, right? How it's kind of intaglio. Like one is like dark on light, the other's light on dark. I love the patterning of the rabbit. I love the very three-dimensional fruit, the light to dark that really stands out. I love the roving in the ear and the nose. And I really love that bit of green on the top right where it's not kind of the leafy veins, but it's a swirly design. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that so different? To me, that really pops the piece. If if that piece was like the same kind of veining as the other two, it would still be lovely. But the fact that you kind of struck out and did something completely different, kind of like a climped swirl, I would say that that takes it from being a great piece to a stellar piece. And I really love that about it. 
cre creating these little um, these little games or these little these little things to find within a piece is the prestige of the piece. And the fact that you designed it, you made it, you thought about that little device, it's a game changer. It brings the piece to the next level, without a doubt. I absolutely love it. Thank you, Linda. Diane, good to see you watching from Canada. Great to see you. Happy Friday night. And Melanie says, I love the texture. Just wait. In a while, you will say, I think I will make a rug with texture. And you will struggle to do it. I like the texture. Absolutely. That's so true, Melanie. The more you get away from like your higgledy-piggledy roots and doing uneven texture, the more you get over-taught, over-trained, out-trained to the point where you can't do stuff in a super fast bohemian style anymore. You lose that voice. You use that. You lose the language when you train yourself too technically. And if you are a technical person and you long for that technical look, then you have to do that. You have to honor the technical part of yourself who's saying, no, I really do want it to be more technical Then you should. But if you're saying, I only want it to be more technical because I've heard that it should be more technical, then absolutely don't. Because it is great. It is great to have, you know how like uh, people say like, oh, you know, babies have this special connection to like the heavens and the big mysteries of the world because they're closer to it. Same thing with rug hookers, right? When you're starting, you're closer to what is the most natural and organic way for you to work. And the more you get trained and the more you get people telling you how to do it, baby, the further you get away from that. And it, the further you get away from it, it's just like kids. Hey, Teddy, do you remember what it was like before you were born when you were in my stomach? Right. The, the older he gets, there's less chance that he's going to say something exciting and interesting. You know, you 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 out train yourself. So don't don't do that unless you really mean to do that. Andrea said, I'm not worried about my loops. I don't even block my rugs. I, I really don't either, Andrea. I only do when I'm teaching or, um, you know, when I'm photographing something. And I think that people expect that of me because of the business. But for my own stuff, um, yeah, no. I mean, it's just, it's it's like the real me. I'm, I'm wearing pajamas, right? And then I've got this shirt from TJ Maxx on, but I got pajamas on, Andrea. Ha, ha, half done is good enough for me. It's just, it's the way that I work. Oh, Gail, you love the bunny. It's so good. So, you know, before, wait a minute, I, I'm going to move. I'm not sure if you mean this money, bunny or the last bunny. I'm going to move to Christina's bunny in just a second. I forgot about the last part of this conversation. Let's come back here for one more minute. And, oh, can we see the bunny closer? Absolutely. Absolutely, Cindy. Let me stretch it, stretch it up. And let's see the bunny closer. I think I can do even better. I love how you all send me these great photographs that are super high quality. Look at that little face. I love that little tea drop mouth. You know, when you do a little animal mouth like this, he's got like little jowls, right, with the circles helping with the little jowls. But then under the nose, you drop to an upside down T. And <clears throat> to me, that's... <coughs> Oh boy, wait a minute. Mm. Uh-oh, I think I'm gonna be in trouble uh, in a little while. Something's hitting me like a hammer and it's it's not the wine, I'll tell you, I'm not even drinking that. Um, such a lovely piece and this is the swirl in the corner. Uh, oh, look at in the middle, I'm also seeing all that directional hooking. Good thing we stretched it open, it really, I love the star, right, on the um, grapefruit. Right. It's just such a lovely piece. The material is really lovely, too. You're welcome. You are super welcome, Cindy. So, you know, let, let's answer the question about the title. Like, what are you thinking about the title? Let me let me come back. Wait a minute. Let me bring it back here. Because Deborah said, I think I'm going to name it Grapefruit Leaves. Does anyone else have a name for it? Well, this is a great time to brainstorm. Does anybody have a name for it? Let me... I'm going to look at him too. Um, let's brainstorm together. Let's see. Um, so the story was that, mm, that there was a road trip, right? And that this is a grapefruit and that this bunny was kind of hanging out on the side of the road, making the most of, of this great find, these grapefruit leaves. So we're talking about some beautiful, fresh, ripe, super sour grapefruit and an adventure vacation. And gosh, I like having the word grapefruit in there because that really, it's so unexpected. I also love the movement of the leaves. Ooh, this is one to think about. You let me know because my brain's already moving forward to the next slide. And I do want to spend time thinking about this. Visiting Bunny, that's nice. 
That's nice, Melanie. And Judy says grapefruit leaves is the memory that she's locked on. It's true. It's true because it's the grapefruit and the leaves, right? Those are the, the two components. I like the road trip part, too. I wonder if we can weave that in somehow. Well, I thought it was Peter Rabbit gets the fruit. That is so cute, Cindy. That is so cute. Peter Rabbit gets the grapefruit. That would be really cute. Ooh, I like that, too. Ooh, I like that, too. Well, keep going with, I'm going to keep moving, but keep going with the brainstorming if, if you think of more. Brenda likes the name you chose first, too. All right, if you think of anything else, put it in there. And, and I'm sure Deborah's going to tell us what she chooses in the end. Another great bunny. This is this is Christina Scouten's bunny. This is so beautiful. It popped up on our Facebook group. Welcome Spring. And this is hooked with wool yarn. This is a 14-inch pillow, and it's backed with cotton flannel. Just finished it this morning, and this was on March 2nd. Christina, this is such a lovely pillow. I remember you putting the word out there. What You, you hooked the motifs. Um, you hooked, like, the, the bunny the flower that might be yeah that's a flower i was thinking for a second it was a butterfly i think that's a flower i love your font christina your font is really good i also love the bunny like just look at this the character of the bunny right the way the way that he's standing up on his haunches and his little cottontails behind him and i like the balance between the white chest and throat and the white cottontail um i like how graphic he is um and how subtle like the the leaf is it's really a great piece. Graphically, it's a great piece. And your font is over the top. This font is great. I love the P in spring because it's like an abbreviated P, right? It doesn't have the long tail off of it. Really cool. And you were saying what color for the background. I said dusty rose for the background. I, you know, I'll always say dusty rose. That will always be my answer. <clears throat> but um, a lot of people said different colors. You, cho you chose the color that you liked best, and I think it's beautiful. And it probably matches your stuff perfectly, right? Super, super pretty. I really love it really good piece oh and this is the back of it and this is a flannel this is a flannel material or a flannel shirt have you seen um it, it, this is what it reminds me of have you ever seen someone back a cushion exactly like this just cutting the front of a shirt that buttons up right because if you do that if you just cut the the, the front off a button-up shirt Oh, that is the perfect word for it, Carrie, the childlike bend of the ear. That is that is the perfect, um, it is childlike. It's the velveteen rabbit kind of bend to the ear, isn't it? That is exactly it. And I love, I love the way the paws are kind of gently hanging in front, right? Ready for action, but also a little bit relaxed. Really pretty. But when you do the back on a pillow like this, you can use a, a shirt that unbuttons, and you literally put the, sew it on, Put the pillow in and then button it up and just as easy just like you would button the front of your your top and just as easily you can unbutton it right and 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 change the pillow out or wash the pillow or whatever but absolutely you can use a shirt that already has the button sewn on i mean why go through the hassle of putting in a zip or putting on your well your own buttons unless you want a very specific look like this which is super lovely um, I've seen a lot of people doing that with shirts. And of course, it doesn't have to be a flannel shirt. It could be any shirt. This is really lovely. So we were talking this week, I think on um, Monday during coffee time, about Janine Abrosius and her the beautiful um, <clears throat> rug that she has in Rug Cooking Magazine. And we got talking on the Facebook page, and I got talking to her personally uh, on email. And she just is so lovely. She has so many lovely pieces. This is one of Janine's pieces called Buckeye Butterfly. And she says, Buckeye Butterfly is complete. I designed the pattern from a photo I took in my flower garden. It's 18 by 18 inches, wool cut number four through eight, yarn, sari silk, and velvet. And she said, I just wanted to post another of my rugs. I'm looking forward to traveling again soon with my sweetie. Blog post about this piece is here. And just so you know, her blog post is called, um, oh, I want to show you uh, the, the picture, with the, the hooked rug with her sweetie next. Well, let me show it to you right now because this is so great. This is off her blog post. So this is Janine and her sweetie. And her blog is called Joyful Wonder. This is a WordPress blog. So joyfulwonder.wordpress.com. And this is, oh, I wrote Bar Harbor. It's actually Bass Harbor, B-A-S-S. -S. Uh, that was a striking butterfly gale. It really was, right, Linda? Beautiful. This is such an amazing piece. Uh, it's so romantic. I just love it. What a great memory, right? What a great memory. What a beautiful piece. 
What a beautiful sentiment. What a beautiful piece. So romantic. I love Janine's placement of colors. Of course, she teaches. So she really knows what she's doing. And this, this really speaks to the tip that I always give, which is make sure that if you want to learn want to learn from the beginning or want to learn from scratch or want to learn something new to add to your bag of tricks, uh, got you in the feels, Kirsten, me too. It is so romantic. If you want to learn or add to your hooking bag of tricks, make sure that you choose a teacher whose work you love, right? The things that she's doing with color and shadow here, lots of little bits of color, right? It's not, it's not super, it's, it's super graphic, but it's not like super blended and it's not super shaded, right? It's very different. This is a very distinct style. So this really, when I look at this, I think this is exactly what I mean. When you want to learn something new, choose a teacher that you love their work and you want to do, you want to do more work like their work. Forget, I'm gonna, I always say this and I get in so much trouble, forget about certifications, forget about who taught with whom, look at somebody's work and if you're thinking, I want some of that in my life, then look for classes with that teacher, whether it's online or whether it's local or whatever. But um, Janine's stuff is just over the top, fantastic. And again, her blog is called Joyful Wonder. Dot, so this is WordPress, dot WordPress dot com. Carrie, it's an amazing keepsake. Absolutely beautiful. Melanie says, Janine is one of my favorite designers. Her patterns are all so nature driven. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's so nice to hear that she's going to be off on uh, road trips and stuff and, and coming up with more compositions, more designs like this. Uh, her sketches are fantastic too. She, I just love everything about her. She's got such a lovely personality too. So this is a beautiful piece, very different than the last one. So graphic, so um, striking, isn't it? Linda Byrne, and she writes, some progress. I've shaved some areas. So what she's doing here, she's punching and shaving as she goes. For, like, it's like a Waldenburg technique, but it's punching. Right, so it's a real variation on a theme that we know well. Some progress, I've shaved some areas and it helps to define the lines. Some are a bit wobbly, but this is due to me stretching it unevenly. I'm hoping it will straighten up uh, when it's off the frame. As I've, oh my gosh, I'm yawning, I'm so sorry. As I followed the lines on the fabric, I thought I'd add a photo. See, I must be getting sick because I thought it said potato, but it said photo. I thought I'd add a photo um, of the back reminds me of my Dutch, reminds me of Dutch tulip fields, reminds me of that too, flying over the Netherlands and looking down on the Dutch tulip fields. It's just so graphic and beautiful, right? This really reminds me of early 20th century um, weavers, like really artistic weavers of that time. Um, April says, I love that geometric. It's so very neat. Cannot wait to see this one done. It is really neat. And you know, with any backing fabric that we would use for punching, Right, the straight lines, the up, the north, south, east, and west is no problem. That's all fine. That's all going to work because you just follow the grain. But the diagonals are the ones that will play you, aren't they? So if you're stretched a little bit um, off, you could you could just be missing the diagonals because you can see from the back of this piece that Linda is extremely tidy and neat. Right, there's no question about that. This is a super tidy piece. What a lovely piece! Look at all this great directional punching too. Isn't this something? I mean, the more I look at, so many of you are punching now, and punching has always been a distant second for me, and I have to say I'm getting more into it. I really am. I like the speed that it offers. I'm getting more interested in, in my heart in abstracts, and abstracts and, pun, and punches, uh, punch needle projects are kind of a match made in heaven, right? Gainer, it is amazing. It is such a tidy piece, and with this, with a different sort of sculpting on the surface, it's very dense. It's very lovely, really cool in the back too. That's right, April. It's cool back and front. Speaking of punching, um, Pam, oh, Pamela says definitely not off on the, the, the diagonals. I agree. It doesn't look off on anything. It might be that it felt off, or that she's tidied things up, because everything. Let me give it the old stretcher Rooney. Everything looks um, extremely tidy. I can't see any. I mean, look at this. It looks like Etch-a-Sketch. Remember Etch-a-Sketch? You turn the little knobs and it like makes these little 360 turns like this, all these fine lines. Kaz, you started liking punching too. Oh, I love it. It's the opposite to how you work. Kirsten, me too. Me too. Absolutely. Mm. Really beautiful. And 
<laughs> it is you, Ryan. It is you. How do you do it? Zebra herd, three foot by four foot, wildlife portfolio. So, Ryan, tell us the truth. Is this a struggle? This is a tough composition. I mean, you are the man for it. No doubt about that. Uh, this is a tough composition. So, zebra herd. So, in this, you said, done with the outlining, only needed the one skein. Really? Really? Well, that actually makes sense because it is just uh, the filigree line going around all of it, right? Only needed the one skein, so I wasted an hour and eight dollars getting a second. Uh, oh, I see. You went to get the second because you anticipated needing. You didn't waste it, Ryan, because you're going to use it for your next project. You know you are, right? It's never going to go to waste for you. It's not like this is your last piece, is it? Never. Never with you. Um, and, you know, when you put this piece up, let me show a few more. So you're filling it in here, and, and Ryan, you said the, the, line, the lines are crazy. And they are crazy. It is a bit of an optical illusion to look at it, isn't it? And that is the idea of the piece, really. Um, April says, this is great, Ryan, but holy eyeballs. How, how are your eyes holding out on this one? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that to you, Ryan, because I, I also am thinking holy eyeballs. Uh, Ryan says, it was a jumbo skein. Oh, I see, ripped the backing. Oh, no, you ripped the backing. Um, <clears throat> so you're going to give it a little patch. Oh, I hate it when that happens, right? I mean, that's an understatement. I'm so sorry about that. That's so aggravating. Um, it's looking amazingly great, though. So you're, you're, you're saying in the posts that, you know, it is hard following these lines. It is like an optical illusion, so I'm not surprised. And you made a funny joke on one of your threads where you said, filling it is like this. I love that, Ryan. I love that. I looked at this for a while and not getting it because it's so, it, it is completely an optical illusion, isn't it? That is so clever that you wrote that. And other people were chiming in. Carrie, Carrie, you said, I feel like my brain couldn't process this, but I think you'll knock it out of the park. And Corey said, I'm saying a prayer for your eyes. Ha <laughs> ha. Can't wait to see it. So much support and love in our group, isn't there? There's so much camaraderie. I'm just so happy with the way things have evolved with our group and with our group here, whether you are on Facebook or not. I just love the way that we come, we, we close ranks to support each other always. That's the way that life has to be, right? Rallying around our friends. Ryan, let us know when you fix that stupid patch because um, it, it's a bummer to rip through. And I know and it's just older materials, right? These are vintage materials that you're using. Um, so it's, bo it's bound to happen once in a while. It doesn't happen on every piece with you. I feel like you're super lucky. But this is just, this is a lot. Sharon says, you must see this in your dreams, right? This is probably one of those things you close your eyelids and it's like imprinted on your eyelids for the next three hours. It's, yeah, it's, it, this is a really ambitious piece. Um, I'm dying to see how it evolves. And I, I know it's going to be glorious when it's done, but I'm having the same thoughts. Like they're mostly like uh, shout outs and sending you love because it's, it's a lot. This is a lot. And, and you are the man to do it. So I don't know what I'm worried about because I have every faith in you. But yeah, it's it looks like the toughest piece I've ever seen, to be honest. And I can't I can't wait to see the rest of it. And this was an excellent joke. Keep them coming. So funny. This next piece is uh, from Julia, Julia Shami. So Julia said, I'm starting my first project and I'm struggling. I'm using a two millimeter pencil hook. So um, so that's a good size. I like that size. That's that's between like, you know, uh, crochet hooks or um, rug hooks are not standardized. So this is I'm equating this to a crochet hook. So this is something between a fine and a medium, uh, a two millimeter um, pencil hook for eight ply yarn. And my backing is burlap. OK, so it, it's eight ply yarn, but it's very thin ply because it looks like it's a worsted weight. Um, it doesn't even look like a bulky weight, although I might be wrong. It's still eight ply sounds enormous. But um, Suze, when you hear thundering hooves, is it horses or zebras? <laughs> and Ryan says, just picking out one shape at a time. I guess that's the way it has to go, right? That, that makes a lot of sense, doing it piece by piece. That's the only way you can, you can attack it. Um, and Judy says, I'm sure it'll be masterful when you fill it in, but the outlines really give a cool skeletal effect. Yeah, that was, I mean, it's just such a cool piece. It's such a cool piece. You know, 
It's so funny because we've been talking about multiples a lot in this episode. This is multiples, but it does not read as multiples, does it? It reads more as an abstract and you have to work for it here. You look at it and you think, okay, is it, is it, um, what is it, right? And then you start to see the heads emerge from the, from the herd. And this really is how a herd works, isn't it? It works as a unit. And, you know, once in a while, one head sticks out kind of Tom and Jerry style or when, when cat, cartoon cats fight, you get that ball in one paw and one tail sticking out. It's kind of what this composition reminds me of with some heads sticking out. And that's kind of, for me, the first, even more than the patterning, it's the first cue as to what we're looking at. It is a fantastic composition, but it does have a very abstract quality to it. It is super stylized. Um, I'm thinking that you're hearing thundering zebra hooves like in your in your dreams. So Julie's struggling with this. Um, she says, I'm finding it hard to have consistent hoop sizes. I think you mean loop sizes. And also, when I go to loop the next loop, I sometimes find myself pulling out the previous loop. Okay, hold on one second. And, okay, so let's tackle these things one by one because there's a couple more points. These are all problems that you would encounter when you're starting out and you're killing it, you're killing it. So I love the way it looks like you have this either glued or tacked or stapled to a frame. Awesome, fantastic. This is a great way to start. It is really common that when you're starting out, you do pull the loops out before, like you pull your previous loops out. The best thing to do with this, right? And I don't have a frame in front of me, but if you join the next hook along, uh, this is something I'll show. I showed it in the previous hook along. When you are, your dominant hand, and for me it's my right hand, is pulling up a loop, while down below my dummy hand, right, my left hand that's not really good at much, right? It's not good at it, stuff like this, right? My The left hand is not good at being smart and coordinated. This is the good hand, right? This is the hand that does this, easy movement. But my hand underneath is like not only my dummy hand, but it's my blind hand because it's underneath the material and I can't see what my fingers are doing. I can only guess, right? Hoping that I'm hardwired well between my brain and my hand and that it's going well. So my hand is under there. And when I'm pulling up a loop, I'm pulling up with the loop still attached to my hook on top while down below my hand is still seesawing or levering the wool strip or yarn down. So in other words, I'm tugging up to form the loop, but meanwhile, I'm not letting go of my material strip underneath. I'm still holding it and I'm seesawing it, almost like flossing teeth like this to get it right. I'm not letting go of the loop with the hook and I'm not letting go of the loop between my fingers. And I'm pulling on it like, like I'm flossing until I get the height right. And once you do and it's stable, you move on to your next loop and remember to hold on to both, right? And do it right again. Because as soon as you pull, as soon as you let go underneath and you're like, no hands, mom, right? And you pull up the next loop, you're likely to pull the one before it up, right? That's why I keep my hand on the material so that it makes it impossible to accidentally pull out extra loops. My hands do that automatically with every loop, right? And it's because it's because I figured it out over time that that's what works for me. Not everybody does that. Not everybody wants to do that. Not everybody should do that. But that's what works for me. So that's how I see preventing. Um, yep. And Judy's saying, it, like, keeping the proper tension and knitting. Exactly. Exactly. Perfect. That's it. Linda Ann, great to see you. Happy Friday, Linda Ann. Great to see you. And Lisa says, do you think the yarn could be too thin? Um, okay, let's look at that too. That is entirely possible. I'm really trying not to blow my nose and I'm sounding like Rudolph because I don't want to do gross things on camera and I'm getting all kinds of symptoms. Slammed. I'm going to make it. Don't worry, I'm going to make it. Um, it, could be that, it could be that the yarn is a little bit thin. So I think that's a great thought. Um, Lisa, I think that's a great thought. I think that's very, very astute. So I'm also going to say, let's add, let's add, um, let's add a few notes, right? And and because we're working on this together. So let's say um, for Julia, these could be the things. Think about what I just said about kind of levering it, like like dental floss, top to bottom, so that you're not pulling out other loops. But I agree with Lisa. It could be that the that the yarn is a little bit thin, and if it is thin, why don't you double up, 
right? So just double, double up and pull through two loops at once. So in other words, using my thing, right? Instead of pulling up one loop like this, like hooking one loop at a time, this is a hair clip, right? It's not a hook. One loop at a time, I'm doubling it up. And I'm doing two loops at a time like this, right? And and that'll make it, um, that'll open up the hole with, with um, a loop that's much thicker because it's twofold, right? It's doubly thick. Um, that's a great, that's very good, very good. Perhaps the loops are too packed. It's hard to tell. I don't, possibly, possibly, I'm not worried about that right now because she's still having loops falling out. So I'm thinking if anything, they're not, they're, they're not packed enough. I'm not sure. Let's look at it. Let's look at it close together. Um, you do always want to be careful about packing always, right? Pamela, it's a, it's a great point. You always want to be careful because you know, when you pack, you get too dense and your surface buckles this to me, now that it's opened up, this looks fine. It doesn't look packed at all. It looks fine. I think it's just a question of keeping those loops up. The height looks perfect. And I want to just reiterate for Julia, what I just said earlier, if you are struggling with the height of your loops and having them be exact, make sure that it's because you want them to be exact. Because if they are not exact and you are loving the way it looks, then you are already there. And, and you don't need to be looking for other technical things to tweak. This looks great to me. What you've done so far looks great, right? So it, you might feel like you're having a struggle and you might indeed be having a struggle, but it's looking, it's looking great to me. Uh, I like the idea of doubling up the yarn. That could help a lot. And Julia also says, and also, when I go to wrap the yarn around my hook, I often <coughs> find myself splitting the yarn. Um, so then I decided to get a six millimeter hook, thinking it might help to catch the yarn better and stop the splitting, which I guess it did a bit. But I'm just unsure of what I'm doing wrong um, or right, LOL. I pulled out my work four times. Okay, so Julia, stop pulling out your work. It's really good. It's good. It's really good. Stop pulling out your work. You'll see when everything is filled in around it, it's perfect, right? Don't waste any more time winding yourself up, pulling stuff out. It's not worth it. It looks great. Honest to God, it looks great. As far as splitting, it sounds like the two millimeter hook was a little bit too thin for yarn that's on the thicker side. So if, you're, if your hook is too thin, that, you know, you want to catch, I don't have a hook right here, but you want to catch, I'll do like this with my finger, you want to catch the yarn in the crook of the hook, right? But if the crook is very shallow because the hook is so small, instead of catching it in the crook, you're going to catch it on the hook part, like a fish being caught. It's going to split the wool, like right in half, the piece of yarn right in half. So it does sound like it does sound like your hook was a little bit too small, and you got a bigger hook, and you're already seeing better results. And I, I'm willing to say, I'm willing to bet a lot that that was the problem with the splitting the yarn. That is something that can happen at the beginning until that blind hand underneath gets used to feeding the material into the crook. Until your hand is very used to that and it takes a little bit of time, it can be frustrating and you can keep splitting it. But I think you were, I think your diagnosis was absolutely right. You were using the wrong size hook. So I think you got it. I think you got it in one and that is fantastic. Um, spam risk, no thanks. Um, oh, so let me see. So, uh, Carrie says, Deanna, if you're getting hit over the head with a cold right now, we'll all survive. I'm going to see how it goes. I'll see how much longer I can do it. I, it, it's like hitting me hard all of a sudden. Let's see if I have a fever. I don't think so. Um, thanks Carrie. That's so sweet. I'm going to try to push on cause it's such a big night for us. Um, sometimes it is the yarn itself. April says, yeah. Yep, that's I, that's exactly what I was thinking too. It, the yar, yarns have different um, sort of finishes, right? They're spun differently. Some yarns are spun with a, a much higher twist, and with the higher twist, if you think about what something twisted looks like, like a pretzel, right? With the higher twist come all of those extra possibilities for catching catching the yarn at the wrong place, and thus like um, skewering it with the hook. Uh, rather than catching it cleanly in the crook to pull up. So these are things that definitely happen, right? This is so worth talking about. These things definitely happen. Um, let me see. Keep at it, Julia. That's right, Lisa. Keep at it. And Wooly Red Rug says, uh, try, learn, try leaning your hook toward the previous. 
That's a great one too, isn't it? So let me finish reading the comment first. Um, to the previous loop as you pull it up, that feeds new loops from the woolen thread underneath, not from the previous loop. That's a great idea. So I think what Wooly Red um, Rug is saying very well, very well put to, is when you pull up your loop, pull it over a little bit and lean it into the loop before it right like lean it over like you're placing it onto the loop before and it kind of sets it alongside the loop before catches it a little bit onto the loop before that's a great tip a lot of people do that to both make sure that your next loops don't fall out or, or you pull out the previous ones but also to lock the size right because when you pull it over um, and lean it against the previous loop you're also testing the height against the previous loop so when you want a very even pile, it's twofold good to do that because you're locking it kind of in place, but also you're checking the height. So great tip, really good tip. Thank you. That was really smart. Um, and Melanie says a six millimeter is a very large hook. I use mine all the time, but if you're using a six millimeter hook in thin yarn, the hole may be too large. For the th yeah, so the jump from two to six millimeter is a large jump. My favorite hook for all hooking remains the three millimeter for myself. We're all different. Between three and four for me are my favorites. Um, for me, six is large too. That's like a, prim a definitely a primitive coarse hook in terms of rug, rug hooking language. Um, so it might be kind of like a Goldilocks thing where the first one was too small, the second one is too big, but see how it goes. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And, it. and if you're getting good traction and it's working better, that's great. But Melanie's point is really solid that if the hook is now too big, three bear style, then when you pull it through, it could be making a really big hole and then the loops will want to go through because you've really opened up the backing, right? You really opened up the hole on the backing. So interesting. Yeah, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep going for a little while longer. Definitely going to uh, close on time and we are going to have material for next Friday without a doubt. Um, hold on just a second. Let me find where we were. Let's see. Hang on. Oh, wow. We got lots. You know, and the beauty of it is um, so many people are sending stuff in now that that we have lots to look at. Isn't that it? Isn't that a joy? That's just all good news, isn't it? This is from Sonia Shrivers in Belgium. Sonia is still a beginner hooker. You would never know it, right? Because even her first piece was crazy. She's killing it. She's, I'm not even going to use the word beginner anymore. She's not a beginner. She is killing it. She's over there. And, and it's hard when you're in Europe because you know I lived there for many, many years. Um, it's hard to get materials because this is not a thing over there. This is not a thing. And she's learning it online and she's figuring out her materials and her patterns and her backings and all of this. She's figuring it out as she goes along. And this is a noble and commendable thing because this is in the true spirit of the craft, right? Being able to figure it out, just figure it out by flying by the seat of your pants. It's, it's hard to approach when you don't have help and you don't have supplies. Um, really really uh noble right so sonia said finally a little satisfied with the colors designing something for yourself is difficult uh but a challenge but a challenge and very often starting all over again but still a lot of fun absolutely absolutely sonia is a dutch speaker um too so i am going to say in dutch um chutso and heel heel um lekker um he, um it's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful Gisela piece. Cozy, charming, um, colorful, quaint, has a great primitive feel, but it's cozier. A lot going on in the background that is just so fitting, so beautiful. I love the big flowers in the corner. I love the primitive style, but there's so much action in here. It is so lovely. I love the color plan. I like the dark blue in the background. It's really unexpected. I love the dark blues with the celery, sagey greens, with the mustard yellows, the honey yellows, the russet reds, the rose reds. I like that little robin redbreast type character. It's probably not. It's probably a completely different bird. But also look at the loops on her flowers. Let me stretch this one a little bit. It is such a beautiful piece. It's a happy piece. It's a beautiful piece. Um, it's, it's, it's so cheerful, isn't it? In Dutch, the word hazella is like, uh, it is it means like extreme coziness. And it really, really has that. Look at how neat she's working. This looks almost like velvet or sweater material, like these little pops, these little buds. 
Isn't that gorgeous? This is gorgeous. This is yarn, right? So maybe just thicker yarn. I think that's just thicker yarn. Sonia Hutsa, you are doing so well. You are doing so well. The bird seems to be 3D. Kirsten, he does look 3D. Ooh, he really does. His wing looks very Waldemar. Could be that he's using a yarn with a more mohair content or a velvet or chenille content. Or it could be that it's a little bit of a raised leaf. She's certainly doing stuff with like raised relief. Uh, it's really beautiful. Does this also for you have the feeling of a bed rug? Remember when we looked at the bed rugs? For, I'm going to make this smaller again. Uh, those beautiful 18th century bed rugs that are like, you know, just swirls and swirls uh, of patterning and oversized flowers, birds that are much smaller than the flowers themselves. This has that feel for me. It's so whimsical. It's so folky. It's got really country colors and it is so cozy. I just love it. Sonia, you're doing such a great job. You should be so proud of yourself. Um, you're killing it. It's absolutely beautiful, and we all love it. Do a few more here. Oh, this is really neat. Sorry, I'm just trying to clear my throat, sweating it up. I, I'm okay. I'm going to go. I think I'm going to go two more. I was just feeling like it's not menopause. It usually is, but I'm getting these flashes of like, whew, what is it? Don't say it. Don't say it. It better not be. Tony, don't say it or think it. Whew. All right, so let's do two more. Uh, this is a, this one popped up on our Facebook page. Again, Rug Cooking Punch Needle Club. It's absolutely beautiful. S uh, Susan Stevens, Blooming Sheep, patterned by Carla Gerard. I just, my heart stopped when I saw this. I thought, man, I wish I designed that. This is so pretty. It's so pretty. I love the way that the, that the um, sheep is standing. I mean, almost like a little statue. Look at the patterning in the grass. Isn't that smart? Look at the patterning on the body and on the little tail. Look at the kind of little knobs, right? Little little uh, cat's paw, the circles, right? The circle motif on, on the sort of joints, right? It, it's so pretty. It's so clever. It is fun. It is, April. That's the perfect word for it. All of the flowers. Look at the background. I'm going to make this larger, too. Cindy, you got me making doing doing everything larger now. I want to make everything large. Um, supersize me. Come on. Uh, let me see. Let me come back here and let me stretch it out a little bit. Let's let's explore. It looks like it's on monk's cloth. Let me see what else she wrote. Whew. Let's explore all of the different. <clears throat> I think this might be my last one. I'm so sorry. I haven't fallen apart this quickly for a while. Um, this will be a good one to land on though. So, okay, look at this beautiful swirling background. Isn't that something? I'm looking at the, um, the face of the, of the sheep too. I love the kind of sad eyes, like the half moon eyes with the brown. That really does look like a very expressive sheep face. I love that long drawn nose and the upside down T lips again, textured wool, very smart. Outlining in black. It, that and that's really serving um, the function of stabilizing a design that is very busy. With a busy background, even though it's all blues, these swirls still make for a busy background. Those eyes, right? Those eyes are something. What's that song? Oh, those something are smiling, right? Um, I love the nose. I love the patterned wool. I love the outlining. I love the ear with the dots around the, the blue dots around the edge. It's really inspiring, Judy. It really is. I'm in love too, Gail. I'm really in love. Ryan loves the face. It's such an expressive face, isn't it? Let's move over to the body a little bit. Let's look at some more stuff. Look at all these patterns. It's like a kaleidoscope, isn't it? Like looking to a kaleidoscope with all these pieces falling into place. God, isn't that something? I really love this piece. And the black outlining makes so much sense because he's a black sheep, which we all love, right? We all love the sound of that. We probably half of us at least feel like black sheep. Love the polka dots on the tail. I love that there is no border. I'm going to I'm going to pull it um I'm going to I'm going to make it small again so we can look at it some more. I just love the way the feet are standing. Right? It's very very stylized. It's very like mid-century sculptural um standing almost like um hold on. It's coming to me. 
Alexander Calder. That's what I'm trying to say. It's almost like an Alexander Calder uh, mobile design with the legs standing the way that they do. Really, almost like a penny design. Absolutely, absolutely, Cindy. It's almost like there's a bunch of pennies in here. Absolutely, and they've been blasted out in different ways. Some of them um, with sort of halos, right? So just circle within circle. Um, very traditional and others just blasted out very shape driven like daisies and petals and all kinds of rings and interest and oh that grass is really really something let me bring it back hold on I'm going to make it small again I'm really I'm really happy to not see a border on this I feel like when you have achieved perfection to this extent you're you're good you're done it's time to put the hook away right um, I like it just like this there's a lot going on here, but it's very cohesive. It's very cohesive. I absolutely love it. Suze, thank you. I think I'm going to take some um, cold medicine. That I have an extreme sore throat. This is very worrying, isn't it, with all, all things considered. Susan, this is amazing. Um, oh, you said you do like a bright rug uh, in between the primitives. Hooked with number six and number four strips for outlining. Now to whip, now to the whip stitching for the next uh, whip stitching and the next project. So it sounds like you are not going to add a border. You're just going to whip. I think that's a very good call. I really think that's a good call. There's so much color in here now. I love seeing that. the 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 sky is such a huge um, asset to the piece. It's such a stately sky. Um, I like to see it going right to the edge. I don't want to see it interrupted by any bars of color around the edge, even matching. I love it just the way it is. Just like just like Mr. Rogers says, I love you just the way you are, sheep. I love you. And I'm going to leave it at that because we have more than half of a show to go. And that is the joy of having a really large group of people who are super invested and interested in each other's work and in sharing our work, right? It's great. Yeah, I, don't, I don't even want to say it's great to have the nerve to share because it's not about that. You know when you send your work in that we are going to love it. And you know when you send your work in, even if you are a beginner and it is your first rug and you are not happy with it, you know that we can think of a hundred great things to say about it. Like, I, I challenge me. Challenge me to think of a hundred good things to say about your rug, even if you hate it. And I promise you I'll do it. You'll lose that bet. Uh, all of the rugs that you send are lovely and special and important, and we want to see all of them. So we will have gallery night again next Friday night because that was not even half of the content. And I didn't, I don't think, shoot my mouth off extra. Um, I think there's just a lot of pieces to look at, and they're all special, and I'm not going to rush any of them. So if you did not see your piece tonight and you know you sent me a piece, you know that you will see it next Friday. Um, it's just volume lately is fantastically great and high. And we're all patting each other's backs, and that takes some time, right? So happy weekend, everybody. Thank you so much for your well wishes. I hope that I am well, because I feel very happy. My spirit's very, my, 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 my heart is very happy, and I'm very excited. My body's shutting down. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, and yeah, have a great weekend, everybody. I'll be with you on Monday for um, coffee time, and we will not do cocktail stuff on Monday. We'll go to a different subject. That'll be lots of fun. And in the meantime, remember, I just put out a bunch of new patterns. I put out the Design Like Vogue class. If you are interested in hooking something for me for this book I'm working on now, the Design Like Book, send me an email to ribboncandyhooking at gmail.com. If you want to send some more gallery pieces, you have another week, send an email to ribboncandyhooking at gmail.com. Happy weekend. Um, happy spring. I hope the weather does a big upturn for you this weekend. And I will super look forward to being back with you on Monday, noon Eastern Standard Time for coffee time. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you for the Patreon support. Thank you to everybody. Have a happy weekend. And I will see you soon. Hopefully 